Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is George. Today for you I have a review of 2000's Unbreakable, written, directed, and produced by M. Night Shyamalan. It is technically a superhero thriller, and it is starring Bruce Willis, Samuel L. Jackson, Robin Wright, and Shalene Woodard. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this movie and series, the East Rail 177 series deemed by Walmart or M. Night Shyamalan. Um, recently I saw Glass and, you know, it really made me want to go back and redo the whole series as a whole now that it is over in a sense. But yeah, so I went out and bought all three of them on Blu-ray at Walmart. Um, I already did own the original DVD special edition of Unbreakable, but it's Blu-ray, so why not? In this opening scene of this movie, we are shown a young woman who has just given birth to her child. Um, the child seems to be crying a lot, and there's police officers there, and it's kind of implied that they think that, you know, maybe one of the nurses had possibly dropped the baby because they see something that we don't, that they haven't revealed yet. And they revealed that apparently, you know, this child has broken arms and legs, and since nobody dropped them or anything like that, you know, it is assumed that he broke them inside the womb, which is just to open a movie with that and having a kid is such a messed up thing. And I'm not saying I hate it, but that's one thing I love about this series is that it's so grounded in reality that you can't help but feel emotions attached to it. But anyway, that's kind of the introduction that we get to what will later become Samuel L. Jackson's character, Elijah Price. In the next scene after that, we are shown Bruce Willis's character, uh, David Dunn, and we sort of get his little introduction. We see him on a train. He kind of looks, you know, tired, stressed, and a, you know, pretty younger woman sits next to him, as to which he takes his wedding ring off. So we kind of are shown that, you know, he does not have a good marriage, or at least he has a troubled marriage, and the woman, you know, is flattered, it seems, but when he says, you know, how, how long are you staying in town, thinking that he's going to ask her out or something, she says, you know, I'm married, kind of gets uncomfortable and decides to move. Shortly after that, it is shown that they were in a train accident. The East Rail 177 is the train that they're on. There's a crazy accident. They're not sure how it happened. They think, you know, something went awry. And basically, out of all of these people that are on this train, Nobody survives except for Bruce Willis's character. One of the scenes that I really think is like very emotional and surreal is when he comes out of the, you know the hospital bed after this accident, basically unscathed. He has no broken bones. He has he doesn't even have a scratch on him. But you know he comes out to be greeted by his son and his wife. But all these other people are here looking at him, and you know it's all the people who had you know family members on this train that just died and it's so it's so well grounded and that's one thing i love about this movie and this series is that like batman you know because he doesn't have superheroes he's or superpowers i'm sorry he's kind of, you know he's just a normal guy and there's not a lot of superheroes like that so that's why i think that this movie and this movie series is way overlooked i think that this series as a whole is genius I think M. Night Shyamalan is ahead of his time with this series. I think that we are going to look back years from now and go, you know, there still is not, and there may never be another movie series or superhero series like these. After attending a memorial service for all these people who have just died, um, David goes out to his car, and, you know, there's a little card on his windshield that says limited edition on it, which is ironic. Um, which I will get to in the next point or two. You know, in the card it says, how many days have you ever been sick? So that ponders David to then start to question, when was the last time I was sick? When was the last time I was hurt? Because, you know, why wouldn't you think that after you just survived an incident like this? So David asks his boss how many times he's been sick, and his boss reveals that in the five years that he has worked his security job at a football stadium, He's not ever once taken a sick day or called out, which is pretty impressive. So there's more disposition that David is special in some kind of way. Then we get 
put into a flashback in 1974, and we are shown a younger kid who has a sling on his arm, which we can assume is a older version of Samuel Jackson's character, Elijah Price. And it's revealed that, you know, because this abnormality that he has, he doesn't want to go outside because he doesn't want to get hurt. And it's he states that the other kids call him Mr. Glass because his bones break like glass. And it's sad to see that, you know, he kind of wants to hermit himself and not go out just due to that. But that's one thing I love about his mother, Shalane Woodard, that her character you don't really think about until the end of Glass as, in, as a whole for her character. But, you know, she starts to tell him that, you know, you can't be afraid because if this is the way God intended you to be, you know, he could make you fall off of that chair and, you know, get hurt just sitting there. So she is a driving factor for him, which, like I said, we'll bring up later in the series. She tries to motivate him to come out and, you know, not be afraid of the world or not be afraid of who he is. So she tells him, you know, I bought you a present. It's across the street, but you have to go walk and get it. And so he does, and, you know, it ends up being a comic book, and it is a, in fact, a limited edition. Little do we know that that's going to change Elijah's life, and it's going to affect the whole movie series. Now we go to the next scene where David and his son go to visit Elijah at his art gallery called Limited Edition, because apparently there was an address or of some kind on the card that David had found, and Elijah brings up kind of a good point to David that he believes that comics aren't just fiction, that they have to be based somewhat in reality, kind of like all stories. I mean, because when you think about it, almost all stories have somewhat of a base in reality, or at least, you know, something somebody experienced or saw, which is Elijah's point, which is a great point. I'm not going to lie. Basically, his point is that if he is Mr. Glass, if he is Glass, if he is easily broken and get easily get sick and all these things on the opposite end of the spectrum there must be somebody who can't get sick who doesn't get hurt you know quote unquote unbreakable which is where we get the title of the movie from um and it's really a good point because in nature that's kind of the way it is so it kind of makes you think if superheroes were real you know that he would actually have a very valid point so we get another scene where we see just how rocky David and his wife's relationship is. And his wife kind of looks at the accident that he was just in as a second chance. So she wants to, you know, work on their marriage. Because, I mean, at this point, it's shown that they sleep in different rooms. I mean, he sleeps with his son in a bed. And, you know, that kind of makes me question her relationship with the son, too. But I'm not going to really get into that because I don't feel like it's that important. And um, his wife believes that this accident was a second chance for them, which is very nice. I mean, it's there's a lot of very subtle, like, nice things that are said and done in this movie and meaningful and emotional. And that's one thing I love about this movie that I never realized the first time seeing this. Because when this movie came out in 2000, I was, I think, 12 years old. And now I'm 27, looking back, you know, at the series as a whole and... My mind is just blown because I don't, it's going to be a bold statement, but this series, I think we're going to look back and there may not be a superhero or, you know, whatever you want to deem it type of movie that will ever be like this again. And it's genius. And so Elijah goes to visit David at his job at the football stadium. And, you know, David kind of tells Elijah that he is able to see bad, evil you know, whatever you want to deem it, or wrongdoers, by touching them. He gets, like, flashes of images, and one of the men that he touches he thinks has a gun. So they start administering pat-downs, and he says, you know, statistically, if the guy sees this, he's going to walk out of line, which the guy does, but they don't pursue him. David just knows, you know, I scared him off. That's that. I don't need to do anything further. But later in a scene, as Elijah is about to leave... He, I think, wants to know if David is right or not. So he goes in pursuit to follow this man. 
the man you know is eluding him but um elijah starts going down subway steps following the man and falls and you know breaks a couple ribs i think he breaks a leg you know he breaks a couple things trying to follow this man and as the man stares at him and walks away i think you you get this sense that elijah is probably just thinking you know i'm just imagining things or you know could just be me but when the man hops over the guardrail you see the gun strapped to his leg showing him that david was right and you know this is in fact who he is looking for so we get a next the next scene is very important in glass and i will get to that in glass but it's also a very iconic scene in this movie that is unforgettable but you know bruce willis is working out lifting weights and his son you know he tells his son to take weights off for him and secretly he adds them on. So I, I guess knowing that he could lift it, you know, David kind of embraces this possibility. So they start testing his strength and they just add more and more weight onto it. And at the end of it, I think he, he has a total of about 350 pounds that he can lift, which is, you know, not normal to say the least. So yet again, more implications that something is special about him, but we're not necessarily shown what or to what extent, which is also, like I said, I think so smart in this movie. But now, um, Elijah has to go through physical therapy for his leg, and ironically, um, his physical therapist is David's wife, and she, of course, has no idea who he is. David has met him a couple times, but not brought him up to her, and... Basically, you know, they go to do the physical therapy and Elijah starts crying for information about David, about his accident in college that he had. You get the sense that that's why he's doing it, but at the same time, Samuel L. Jackson's such a great actor, like the way he delivers the lines is that he's just like, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to press and... But then he does. So you know that he has ulterior motives and... His character is not to be taken lightly. But his wife reveals that she couldn't stay with a football player because she didn't want the violence in her life. So Elijah is trying to piece together David's story because this accident that David was in ended his football career. But the way that it's pointing in the direction now is that it seems like he intentionally did it so that he could stay with his girlfriend or wife or whatever. So basically he... He gave that up for, as Elijah says, a woman. And it's very reminiscent, you know, comics and superheroes. And one thing I really like that there's this kind of dynamic between David and Elijah that um, is like Lex Luthor and Superman. And his wife is kind of like Lois Lane. I'm not saying that, you know, this is supposed to be like a Superman movie, but it's very... It's kind of the same because strong as Superman is, Lex Luthor is still his, his mental superior. And that's what Elijah is to David, which we just don't realize the extent of yet. Anyway, David's son gets in trouble at school because he's trying to help somebody and he wants to see if he's like his dad. But he, he even says, you know, I'm not like you. And while talking to the principal or whoever it is at the school you know we are shown that David almost did actually die when he was young um he almost got drowned in a pool which the principal or whoever was at at the time and he you know David just doesn't remember so that's really the only time that we are shown that David ever had a weakness or was close to you know death is in that moment when he was a kid and so in the next scene, or in a couple scenes from then, um, David's son tries to shoot him with a gun. He doesn't try, but he's attempting to because he says, he says, you know, logically, if I shoot you, you're not going to get hurt or you're not going to die. Um, which, yeah, David does eventually defuse the situation without getting shot. It's very emotional for the, all of them. But... Yeah, so basically it just shows that the son is convinced that his dad is actually a superhero and nobody else wants to kind of believe it besides Elijah. Next, um, you kind of see moments of vulnerability with David with Elijah where he's telling him, 
that, you know, he did almost die as a kid by drowning, and that he basically did fake his football injury so that he could be with his wife and kind of lead a normal life. So it basically shows that David kind of turned his back on his true calling. And, you know, obviously Elijah is trying to figure out what that is for him and for himself. And so we do get a nice scene in the next shot of David and his wife, you know, attempting to rekindle their relationship and they're out on a date and things seem to be going good. And when they return, you know, babysitter says somebody called from New York about a security job and they wanted to hire David. And, you know, that's why he was on the train in the first place was he went for that job and he even stated, you know, I didn't think that I got it or I don't think I'm going to get it. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's not necessarily interesting, but it's funny that because David has somewhat gained notoriety for being the only person surviving this, you know, train accident, now that it, it seems like that could be a reason why this company now wants to hire him because who wouldn't want a security guy who was the only survivor on a train crash? But we also get a flashback that I don't, I didn't even remember was in this movie about the, you know, David's car accident. And it does show that David was never injured. He actually saved his wife's life. And, you know, it just goes to show more that he did, in fact, fake his injury. And in a very cool scene, um, David eventually, under the guidance of Elijah, starts to embrace that, you know, he could be right and that things aren't what they seem. So he goes to a you know, train station and tries his gifts of, you know, helping somebody by touching people. And it's a very great scene. And one thing I really love about the series is... M. Night Shyamalan has a lot of very unique and great shots, which I will get in more into in glass. But, um, but yeah, he just, one thing I noticed about him is he just seems to get things out of certain actors that other people can't. And that's one of the reasons why I love this movie so much, because personally, I'm not a huge Bruce Willis fan. Not because I don't dislike him, but just because he's always typically the same person and and M. Night Shyamalan's movies are I feel like are the only movies where he's actually different and I really enjoy his direction with him. One thing I think is interesting is that technically you know this is superhero movie or superhero thriller there is no nothing happens I mean I don't want to say nothing happens but there's no hero or anything until the last about 30 minutes of the movie where you know, David does eventually find somebody who's a wrongdoer and goes and helps a family who has been kidnapped. I think the, the father, the mother has been killed, but the kids are still alive. He saves them. And then um, he gets into a fight with the assailant who throws him into a pool. So here is David trying for the first time to kind of embrace his identity. And the first thing that happens is he gets thrown into a pool, which is, you know, water is his weakness. He almost drowned. But there's a very nice moment where you think, you know, this could be the end of it for him. But, you know, next thing you know, like the pool skimmer comes into the pool and the two kids, instead of running away that he just saved, you know, they came back and saved his life. And... One of the reasons I think they have that in the scene is because, you know, normally you have, when you have movies like these, the hero, you know, they fall down a lot before they finally kind of ground themselves. Him, his first attempt, he just is immediately gets, gets thrown down to like his lowest level. So I think the point of that is that we can only, he can only go up from there, I think is the point that he's trying to drive. The next morning, um, you know, David's son comes down to the kitchen table and his mom and his dad are sitting there staring at each other, eating breakfast, cooking breakfast. You know, they seem like they're in love and things are going good. And, you know, it's kind of revealed through Elijah that in the next scene, I'm not kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but he says, you know, like how he sees the newspaper clipping and he says, you know, how was your morning? How is everything basically now that you did what you were put on this earth to do? And it's shown that everything is great because he did what he is meant to do. His life finally makes sense as an order. 
And there's such a great scene when, you know, when they're eating breakfast, his son, he slides on the newspaper, which he is on the front cover of, you know, with his poncho, um, for rescuing that family. And the son has just this moment of all of that, you know, this is real. They're not crazy. And his dad really is a superhero. And the look on the son's face just conveys it so well. But one thing I love is that there's no exchange of words. Bruce Willis just goes, you know, you got to be quiet about it. That's one thing I like about this, the hero in this movie series is that he's so selfless. He's not like, not at any point does he ever really do anything for himself. He's always doing it for other people or for his family. Like, David is always the last person on his mind. But as you feel like the relationship between Elijah and David is going somewhere, like, they're actually friends, um, you know, Elijah wants to shake his hand, and he thinks just to congratulate him. But, you know, he shakes his hand, and he basically does it to show David that all these things that Elijah has done, and that Elijah is, in fact, the one responsible for David's train incident. And, you know, of course, David is very shocked and upset about this. But when you think about it, as bad as that is, and, you know, as many people as he's killed, if it weren't for that, David's relationship, his marriage would probably be over. He probably would have lost his son, not have seen his son. Um, so, you know, you, you think, like Elijah says, you know, as tragic as it is on the opposite end of the spectrum... If it weren't for that, you know, David's life would essentially be over. He would have just kind of wasted away doing nothing and not, you know, fulfilling his purpose in life. And he wouldn't have fixed his relationship or he won't, you know, better his relationship with his son. So there is a give and take, which I can see why he's upset. But at the same time, he would have to eventually, I believe in my mind, think that you know, as bad of a person as he is, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have any of this. And now we get to the last scene in the movie. One thing I really like about the dialogue is that Elijah now, you know, states that now that David knows who he is, now that David has this identity as a hero, um, Samuel Jackson knows who he is, and he's supposed to be his villain. You know, and I, Elijah says, you know, I know I wasn't crazy, and... You know, he had to do all this stuff, but he was right. In the end, he was right. And it's such a relief because Samuel Jackson's character, you feel bad for, but you're not sure his angle. And even when you know his angle, he, he still has these moments that shine through, not just an unbreakable and glass that you ultimately almost don't feel like he's to his core a villain. But it is stated you know, in a little title card that David eventually does go to the police about Elijah and all of his terroristic things that he's done. He does end up in a psychiatric ward. But Elijah did all this just to find David. And like I said, you know, as terrible as it is, Elijah is relieved because he knows that he didn't kill a bunch of people for nothing. That he was right and heroes and villains do exist. I'm sorry if it seems like I jump around a lot or if I don't technically go like into detail, but I don't like to put everything out there because I do want you to go see the movie and have your own interpretation. But um, like I said, this is the end of my review for Unbreakable. Next, I will be doing Split, um, followed by Glass. And in Glass, I'm going to really talk about the series overall. I don't want to do it in this one just because this is the first one. But that's my review for Unbreakable. I want you to let me know what you think. Um, like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next review and have a good one.